Hello, welcome. Let us continue with our lessons. Uh, we are still on agriculture book one, and this topic now uh, we are going to discuss on classes of livestock. And uh, on the scope under this topic of life, uh, classes of livestock, we are going to discuss. Um, uh, mainly three items. First of all, we're going to classify these uh, livestock into ruminants and non-ruminants. We're going to distinguish the digestive systems of ruminants from non-ruminants. Then we're going to explain functions of different parts of digestive systems of ruminants as well as non-ruminants. And then lastly, we're going to explain the differences of digestive systems among non-ruminants. Yeah, so there are different classes of livestock. We can classify livestock or uh, depending on their origin, we can classify these livestock depending on what they feed on. We can also classify them depending on their digestive system. Depending on their origin, we may have two main classes, that's indigenous as well as exotic. But depending on what they feed on, we may have herbivores, carnivores, as well as omnivores. On herbivores, it means these are animals which will feed on grass or plants only. While carnivores, these are animals which will feed on flesh only. Then omnivores, these are animals which will feed on uh, flesh as well as plants. But uh, in our topic, we are going to emphasize or to look onto details on classes of livestock depending on their digestive system. So these livestock can be classified depending on their digestive systems. That's uh, ruminants as well as non-ruminant animals. So depending on their digestive systems, we're saying that we only have two major classes, that's ruminants and non-ruminants. Ruminants animals, they are also known as oligastric animals. While non-ruminants animals, they are also known as monogastric animals. If we say oligastric animals, it means these animals have many stomachs or chambers. Monogastric, mono for one, it means they only have one chamber or one stomach. So, uh, uh, we're going to spend much of our time uh, to discuss and describe mainly these two classes of livestock depending on their digestive system, that's ruminants and non-ruminants. Before we go into details on the differences between luminance and non-luminance, first we should have the examples of these uh, luminance as well as non-luminance. For example, uh, on the table here, it is showing uh, examples of luminance on the first column, the other column showing examples of non-luminance. On luminance animals, we have cattle, uh, goats, uh, sheep, and uh, non-ruminant animals, we have uh, pig, rabbit, chicken, donkey, horses, etc., etc. Let us now look on the differences between ruminant and non-ruminant digestive uh, system. Uh, to make the work easier, uh, the differences have been uh, put into the table. Uh, the table is having two columns. 
the first column is showing the characteristics of ruminant animals in terms of their digestive system or the other part or the other column is for uh, non-ruminants the first difference is that ruminant animals have four stomach or chamber and that's why they are also known as polygastric meaning they have many stomachs so they have four chambers while in non ruminants only one stomach that's why uh, the other name for non ruminants is monogastric uh, one stomach another difference is that uh, ruminant animals do regurgitate uh, the food meaning once they uh, uh, swallow the food the food will come back to the mouth and uh, rechew while in non ruminant animals they cannot regurgitate uh, food once swallowed uh, it is gone forever it will go under the process of digestion once swallowed but in uh, ruminant animals once the food is swallowed it will come back to the mouth to ritual. Another difference is that in uh, luminous animals, they have microorganisms, especially in the rumen. These microorganisms, they will help to digest cells. So they are present in, one, uh, in the first stomach, which is uh, the rumen. While uh, non-luminous, they do not have microorganisms in their stomach, hence they cannot digest cells except there are some of uh, the luminous uh, with large kakam with large kakam like in rabbits uh, in those large kakam they are also active just because uh, there is a presence of microorganisms which will help to digest cells so but uh, in general uh, non-ruminants uh, they do not have microorganisms in their stomach hence they cannot digest the cells Another difference that in uh, luminant animals they have no uh, tyrin or uh, amylase in the saliva, hence no enzymes digestion in the mouth or walker. But in non-luminance they have the enzymes uh, in their saliva, uh, therefore even enzyme enzymatic digestion will start. Uh, in the mouth. Another difference, uh, digestion and absorption takes place in uh, the rumen, uh, abdomen, and in the intestines. But in an ruminants, most digestion and absorption occurs in the stomach and small intestine. Then the last difference uh, is that uh, ruminant animals have alkaline saliva due to presence of ammonia while uh, uh, non-ruminants the saliva is neutral in ph let us now describe further on the digestive system in ruminant animals ruminants uh, animals with complex digestive system that chew and the card or regurgitate. So, uh, luminous animals were saying that they have complex digestive system. Why are we saying that? It is just because uh, in their digestive system they have several chambers. They have several chambers, more especially on the part of the stomach. They have several chambers, making their digestive system uh, even much more complex so of course we're going to look how complex the digestive system in the luminous animals uh, is and also we're saying that here yeah, it can chew the cut or regurgitate once the food has been swallowed in the luminous animals it will come back to the uh, mouth for the chewing up until the uh, feed materials are fine it's when they can go to the next part or uh, the other stomach or the other chamber so in short uh, this their stomach uh, of ruminous animals have been divided into four chambers 
and these four chambers are lumen, reticulum, omasum, as well as the abomasum. The first uh, stomach, uh, which is known as lumen, sometimes it is also known as a porch. It look like it look like uh, a porch. That is why they it is nicknamed a porch. So lumen is the first chamber uh, which is found in luminant uh, in luminant animals. Then the uh, second uh, stomach, so called reticulum, it is nicknamed honeycomb. Most in terms, uh, the way reticulum uh, looks, it looks like uh, the honeycomb, the little uh, honeycomb uh, which you find in the bee, in the bees. So that's why it is nicknamed the honeycomb. Then the third stomach, which is known as omasum, it is nicknamed uh, many biology, a book or a Bible sometimes. And uh, this stomach, it has got some uh, uh, some piles. It has got some piles, so many, many piles of the forts. So that is why uh, they are nick uh, it is nicknamed uh, many piles, a book. It looks like a, it look, uh, it looks uh, like a book. Then the last stomach, which is a bomasum, it is nicknamed the true stomach. It is the fourth stomach in luminant animals. Uh, it is uh, uh, nicknamed the true stomach just because in nani ruminants, where they only have one stomach, most of the uh, 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 chemical digestion or the activities we are, which are done in the only stomach in an ruminant uh, they are the same activities which are done in abomasum so that is why it is nicknamed uh, the true stomach so this one is the fourth stomach of uh, ruminant animals Let us now have the clear picture of a luminant animal. The pictures you are seeing here is uh, the one of the example of a luminant animal, which is uh, the cow. It is a digestive system of a cow. More especially on the chambers which we are talking about the stomach, we say that the stomach of luminant animal can be divided into three chambers. So this is the first chamber which we are talking about, which looks more like a porch, the lumen, uh, followed by a uh, reticulum, then omasum, then last day here uh, we are having a pomasum. So this is the cow, uh, the digestive system of a cow. Uh, obviously, of course, we may have the mouth or sophagus, but I was much more interested on the uh, uh, stomach, the part of the stomach, uh, the part of the stomach, which was saying that uh, you can, uh, uh, the, the stomach may have uh, about four chambers. So the first chamber is what we call the lumen, which is the biggest chamber um, among is the four chambers uh, in the, the stomach of the lumen, I mean of the luminant animal. So it's the lumen, uh, then followed by reticulum, uh, omasum, then lastly, abomasum. It is important uh, at least to know each and every part uh, and function of ruminant uh, digestive, uh, the, the, the digestive system, which you have just mentioned or which you have just seen on the picture of one of the ruminant animals. So the first part should be the mouth, which is, uh, I mean, the mouth. The mouth, the main function of the mouth is uh, to chew the feed and mix it with saliva. Saliva, most of the times, it will act as uh, the lubricant so that the feed can easily pass onto the next part, which is the lumen, which is the lumen. So the mouth, the main function is to chew the feed mix it with saliva uh, uh, which you will act as lubricant so that the feed can easily pass on to the next uh, part which is the lumen of course it passes through esophagus 
So lumen, as already mentioned, is the first stomach where the food is first redirected. So it is the largest chamber uh, and which serves as a temporary feed storage. Once uh, the animal feeds on the uh, uh, on the glass or the plant, those feeds uh, they are temporarily stored in this stomach right here in the rumen. Then uh, that feed now, uh, if it was not thoroughly chewed, it will be uh, it will be directed back to the mouth uh, to uh, be chewed. That's why we mentioned that. Uh, uh, in in ruminant animals, the animals they do regurgitate. So the uh, regurgitation can be done several times, uh, uh, so that at least there should be a thorough physical breakdown of the feed. A thorough physical breakdown of the feed. Then the feed is channeled, uh, churned, uh, mixed, and softened with water, right? Uh, in the lumen, then it can now be uh, directed to the next uh, stomach or chamber, which is reticulum. But now, uh, in this lumen, remember when we are looking on the differences between ruminant and uh, non-ruminant animals in terms of their digestive system, we mentioned that in uh, ruminant animals, uh, there are some microorganisms which are present, which will help to digest further the cellulose. And uh, these microorganisms, they are present right in the first part of the stomach, which is uh, rumen. Good examples of microorganisms which are present in rumen are bacteria and protozoa. So these microorganisms are the ones which will act on the cellulose. That is why luminance animals are able to feed on the feeds which are rich in fiber. Uh, the main reason is that uh, the, uh, the, the microorganisms, they will help to digest those tough feed materials like cellulose. So once the food is thoroughly uh, 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 chewed, it is directed to the second stomach, which is reticulum. One of the functions of reticulum is that it will sieve and separate fine materials from coarse materials in the food. So once the food is di uh, directed to reticulum, uh, this reticulum now it will start to sieve those feed materials. So it will, uh, once uh, the sieving is done, then uh, there will be a separation of fine materials on the other part, the other part coarse materials. So these fine materials will pass on to the next uh, compartment, that's it, for massam. But the coarse materials will go back to rumen, then back to mouth, where it can either be rechewed or can be uh, removed out of the mouth. Uh, I hope we have ever experienced in some of the luminance animals that we found out that uh, they have uh, uh, they are regurgitating, but they are removing some tough materials, uh, yeah, some coarse materials. So those coarse materials, which will come out of the mouth of luminance animals, they will come from reticulum after sieving and separation of fine materials and coarse materials have done. So those coarse materials, they will come out of the mouth uh, if uh, rechewing has failed. So the fine materials, they will go to the third stomach, which is omasam. Right in omasam, absorption of water from the fold uh, 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 happens here. So one of the function of omasam is to absorb water from the food as it passes to the uh, uh, omasam, which is the last stomach. Apart from that, light in omasam, uh, is whereby uh, it will grind and sieve food particles or feed particles. Now remember, 
I will say that right in Omasam, it is nicknamed as mini piles. It has so many mini piles, which looks like some papers. So those piles, uh, they will undergo a folding uh, process. They will fold, uh, uh, yeah, they will, they will fold the feed materials there by helping uh, physical grinding of the uh, feeds and also sieving of those uh, food materials. So the feed materials which are properly, uh, I mean they are properly sieved, they will pass uh, on to a bumasam. But those which are not properly uh, sieved or they are not very fine, they will be stored right uh, in the omasam. Uh, they will be stored temporarily in the omasam. Then uh, uh, the fine materials, uh, they will go to Abomasam. This one has already indicated that it is nicknamed uh, True Stomach. Here it's where the chemical digestion will take place. Uh, we, are talk we are just talking of physical digestion happening for us starting from the mouth. But now when the feeds leach Abomasam, then chemical digestion take place. Uh, here we are talking of chemical digestion taking place just because uh, uh, we have uh, the, uh, some uh, enzymes, good examples of enzymes which will help here is the uh, pepsin. So pepsin and lenin is uh, excreted, uh, is secreted here in abmasam which will help to digest further protein. Apart from that, right in Omasam, it will also secrete hydrochloric acid. This hydrochloric acid will help to kill some microorganisms within the food substance, within the food substance. So, right in Omasam, I think that is where our chemical digestion now will start to take place. Then the feed, the fine uh, feed uh, or the digestive feed will go to the small intestines. Of course, in the small intestines, there will be further digestion, but also the feeds which have been digested into simple form, they will be absorbed right in the small intestines. Uh, in the small intestines, uh, we have some structures, so-called villi. So they are the ones which will help in the absorption of the simple form uh, uh, food uh, materials which have been uh, digested. So they are absorbed in the villi. They are uh, absorbed using the villi structures. Let us now look into details uh, on the digestive system of nani ruminant. Uh, we have some pictures of several uh, non-ruminant animals in terms of their digestive system. Uh, the first one is the pig. The first one is the pig. So here is the digestive system, uh, the whole digestive system uh, of the pig, where we have esophagus. Definitely there should be a mouth there, then uh, a mouth, then esophagus, uh, duodenum, uh, the stomach, uh, pancreas, liver, colon, reticulum, uh, ileum, as well as the anus. So each and every part here plays the function in digesting the uh, feed. Another example of non-ruminant the digestive system, the picture is the chicken or poultry in short. So in poultry, this is the setup of the digestive system, uh, starting with the beaker, then osphagus, we have the crop, uh, proventricus, uh, then we have the gizzard, also called ventricus, then we have uh, duodenum, liver, pancreas, ileum, colon, uh, uh, cacae, as well as the vet, as well as the vet. Now, uh, 
even though we have so many non ruminant animals uh so we're going to highlight some of the parts which are found in the non ruminant digestive uh, system are uh, more important the functions of the work the first one is the mouth uh, definitely the mouth is there to pick food and swallow it uh, to the crop so uh, right in the mouth you may find some saliva which will act as lubricant and also help in swallowing in most of non-ruminant animals right in the saliva there are also some uh, enzymes there are also some enzymes which will act on the uh, feed then uh, followed by the crop more especially if it is the building or the chicken the crop uh, it uh, act as the reservoir for food and most of the times the food is stored for two hours but the storage of grains can take between 12 to 15 hours before it can pass to the next part i are writing the crop there is a secretion of mucus uh, for softening and moistening the food before the food will pass on to the next part uh lighting the crop uh, uh in the crop it will secrete some mucus so the use of the mucus which is found in the crop is to soften and moisten the food then the food is forced uh, just because now it is soft and or moistened it will be easier now to go to the next part which is proventricus by uh, the contraction of the crop. So proventricus, it is also the part uh, which is important in digestive system, especially in poultry, uh, just because it will have some glands. It will secrete uh, uh, the glands which will secrete gastric juice. So right in the gastric juice is where we find or it will contain pepsin and hydro hydrolic acid these ones they will help to act on the food then once the uh, uh, the food has passed on the proventriculus it will go to ventriculus which is the uh, gizzard gizzard uh, the main function is to crush and grind the food physically with the help of tough muscles and most of the times in the gizzard you find some grit or some sand so with the help of the tough muscles and the grit or the sand they will crush and grind uh, the food then uh, the food will pass to duodenum in duodenum the food is mixed with pancre uh, pancreatic juice and bile the juice most of the times it will contains uh, it will contain the uh, enzymes known as amylase, uh, trypsin, and lipase. Uh, for amylase, it will act on carbohydrate. It will digest carbohydrate. While trypsin, it will digest or it will act on proteins. And uh, for lipase, it will act on fats. It will act on fats so that it, uh, they become into a uh, simple form so that they can easily be absorbed uh, while bile which is uh, uh, mixed with the food right in the duodenum helps in emulsifying the fat then the food will go to the small intestines so as we have already said uh, i mean in the small intestine the food still will be mixed with lipids matters uh, sacros and peptidase enzymes peptidase enzymes and apart from that right in the small intestine of course the digestion or uh, uh, the, the process of digestion will be still taking place in uh, small intestines due to the presence of these enzymes these enzymes will help to digest further the food so that it can be in simple form but another function of small intestines are to absorb uh, the food to absorb the food uh, 
uh, through the structures called the VRI. Then uh, the food can pass on to Kakam. Kakam is uh, uh, another fat which is found in most of in some of the nani ruminants. Some of the nani ruminants, the kakam is small and uh, it is not active, but in some of the uh, nani ruminants, the kakam is large and very active. If we say active, it means uh, uh, we have some microorganisms now. So I said earlier on that uh, this cacum, I mean, uh, the microorganisms, they will help to digest cellulose. They will help to digest cellulose. So that is why, uh, even though most of the nanoluminous, they are not able to digest cellulose, but few nanoluminous animals, they are able to digest cellulose. For example, rabbit. Why? They have large and active cacum. Large Cacum, which will contain microorganisms, uh, the ones which we mentioned, uh, uh, things like protozoa, which will help to digest cells. Apart from that, in cacum, uh, amylase is also present uh, so that it can complete the whole process of digestion. Then we have uh, large intestines. Large intestines, these ones. They will absorb water and the remaining uh, materials they will pass through anus. Let us now look on the differences of digestive systems among nani ruminants. I mentioned earlier that. Uh, not all non-ruminous animals, their digestive system is the, the same. Uh, there is a difference uh, somehow. For example, some non-ruminants, uh, some non-ruminants have sac for temporary food storage, like in poultry. Uh, we have, I mean, in poultry, we have this part which is called the crop. This part uh, is uh, not available in some of the non-ruminous animals. The same applies for ventriculars, which will help uh, for physical grinding of food, with, uh, more especially in poultry. In other uh, uh, non ruminant animals, this part is also not available. And also, some uh, non ruminant animals have large and active cacum containing microorganisms, which will help to digest cells. Wow. Most of the non-ruminous animals, uh, this is not common. It says that they may not have the cacum or uh, they may have a small and not active one. So these are the differences of uh, digestive systems among non-ruminants. Looking on the uh, lesson of uh, classes of uh, livestock, we may have some revision questions. We may have some revision questions. So once you have some responses to the uh, questions, you may pass forward those responses on the uh, number below uh, on WhatsApp, or you just email uh, on the email address down there. The first question is, why is luminant animal also called polygastric? A luminant animal, why is uh, a luminant animal also called uh, polygastric? And another question, uh, which I need the response uh, is, which chamber in a luminant animal is also called a true stomach and give the reason why that chamber is also known as a true stomach. Another one, describe the process of digestion in the crop of uh, a poultry. In short, we are just talking of the function of the crop. 
identify the organ which performs the law of teeth in poultry. Uh, in poultry, they do not have teeth, so you identify the organ which performs the law of teeth in poultry. Another question can be what is the difference among nanoruminants? You can mention one, two, three, up to five. Uh, on the differences among many ruminants. Then the last question might be name three farm animals that are ruminants and three uh, that are non ruminants. So these are the questions uh, which you can uh, do the revision. So our next topic and which will be the last topic will be on chicken production. Till then, goodbye. This mutai and how we are not funa for number one zero. Muzaka la wotu mi duamo yuano ons. That is mutuzira and wasingo kutuman. Ajala karime, ajala kuchwe manyasi, ajala katende anti. Dipo and wopuzira and wotu manso kambi. Then that is mutuzira. School akui granaba mukala. Oh, to me, do